YouTuber Selena Sanchez and I have been working together to get her ready for her final. In this final exam series, part four, we'll be going over gastroechiometry. Now, if you feel like, hey, I need a refresher on gas laws and gastroechiometry, I got you covered. Check out my detailed notes by heading over to melissamaribel.com or clicking on the link in the description box. Okay, let's get into it. A lot of times with these, once again, we're still gonna go from like we're still gonna see the typical typical conversion factors of molar mass, of uh, going from you know moles to moles of something else using our balance equation. Those are pretty much the, the, the typical things that you're really gonna see is molar mass and mole to mole ratios. Those are super common. All right, so let's just start off with looking at this question, once again, finding, you know, seeing what we're given, seeing what we're finding and going from there. So we'll do this one together. Um, so this says, what mass of silver oxide is required to form 388 mils of oxygen gas? And we know oxygen gas or oxygen is never by itself, meaning it's O2, not just O. And then next, we also are given our pressure and we're given our temperature. So I, so far, I'm given all of these different things. Whenever you're looking at these questions, Seriously, start off with, with what you're given. Literally say, okay, well, I know I'm given volume because milliliters or liters represents volume. I know I'm given pressure because millimeters mercury, atmospheres, tor, any of those, PSI, represents uh, pressure. And then we know temperature, that's Kelvin or Celsius. So once I know that and have all that information and I'm asked to find my grams, the fact that it gives you all this information is already telling you what formula you're going to use. So you kind of have to look at it and say, well, what formula do I know that, that has, you know, pressure, volume, and temperature? What can you think of? Um, do you remember your guess laws? There's like 80 of them. I wouldn't say there's 80, but there, there are several, sure. The main one that I want you to know for gastroechiometry and these types of questions is the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law, I'd say, is number one to have down for gas laws, all right? Because you're gonna keep seeing it. So remember, your ideal gas law is the PV equals NRT. So how I know I'm gonna use this is just the fact that it has all three of those. It has pressure, volume, and temperature. It's okay that we don't have N, which is moles. And the reason for that is because that's what we're gonna start off finding. So I want you to think of this as if we were to, to plug this in, right? And then solve for moles, then we will end up figuring out the moles to then eventually get to the grams of something else. So that's gonna be really our first step, is our first step is going to be changing or finding our moles, plugging this into the formula, and then going to grams of silver oxide. So, so far does this make sense why I know it's the ideal gas law? Um, no. <laughs> the moles part, I don't understand why you would use that one instead of like the P1 times P2 over V, whatever. Are we given, are we given enough information to plug it into that formula? Are we given two pressures, two volumes, two temperatures? No. No, exactly, exactly, and, and that, that's where it is. So that's why, you know, when you write down what you're given is, and, it, and I'm, not given, I'm not given two volumes, right? I'm not given two pressures, so it can't be the P, you know, PV equals another PV, right? And then I'm not given two volumes, I'm not given two, te two temperatures, so it's not gonna be Charles Law, which is V1 over T1, right? So all of those are out now. I can't use the combined gas law because I'm not given two volumes, two pressures, and two temperatures. I'm only given one of each. So then that's how I knew it has to be the ideal gas law. So if you, if you literally start off with what am I given, that's gonna deduce and tell you what formula you're going to use. Make sense now? Yeah. Right there, that trick, seriously, like once I figured that out, gas laws became my favorite. And it was just because I knew exactly what formulas to then use from that just by looking at my given values. And then I would just plug in and solve. So, so that trick is gonna help you a lot. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to, well, we're not gonna plug everything in just yet. Uh, the ideal gas law, has a specific set of units that you always want to have it in. So your units for your ideal gas law are gonna be this. So I'll put this up here. Um, you always want your pressure to be in atmospheres. You want your volume to be in liters. 
N is going to be moles. Uh, R is your gas constant of 0 0.0821. And I ran out of room, but you'll see it again. And it's going to be liters, atmospheres, over moles, Kelvin. Or as I like to call, molk. That's just how I remember it. Um, and then uh, T is going to be our temperature, always in Kelvin. So first things first, what you want to do is convert all of these units, or all of these units, into the proper ones. Our pressure is not in the correct unit of atmospheres, it's in millimeters mercury. So what I want to do first is convert that. So I'm going to convert, oh, I did volume first, uh, I'm going to convert the pressure to atmospheres, and remember this is just one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters mercury, that's, that's one to have memorized and have down, right? So. And I think you bought the gas law notes, didn't you? Yeah. You did. Yeah, that's how I saw your story. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so you have this. Perfect. Um, this is actually part of the gas stoichiometry packet. So from here, um, I'm just canceling out my units, and now I'm getting my, my proper unit of atmospheres. And then next, for volume, I'm going to do the same, just now converting it to liters. So simple as that, the first step is always converting to the proper units. Now that we have the proper units of liters, atmospheres, our Kelvin is there, that's perfect. I'm now going to plug everything in. But what I want to make known is where we are given all of our values of O2, but we're asked to find the mass of something completely different. So if we were to plug this into this formula, we're not going to get the moles of silver oxide, we're going to get the moles of O2 because we plugged all of this in here, we're, we're only given the information of O2, so right now we're just finding the moles of O2. So I'm gonna plug everything in, and then I, I just plugged in, <clears throat> excuse me, I just plugged in our pressure that we found that we converted, the volume that we converted, and then next, R, that's our gas constant, once again, that will be given to you, and then temperature, which was 298 Kelvin. So then from there, I'm gonna just multiply these two together, um, and then I'm gonna solve for N, and when I do that, I feel like, I feel like your math skills are, are fine, um, at least what it seems like. Right, the math part is, is okay? Mm-hmm. All right, then pretty much what, what I want you to look at here with, with these, it's, it's just solving for n, right? We're just solving for n. So then when we solve for n, we get this value, but we're not done yet. That just gives us the moles of O2. With me so far? Yeah. Okay. So now that we've found the moles of O2, we're going to use stoichiometry to figure out the moles of the compound that we actually want, which is silver oxide. Okay, so we found our moles of O2, which was the 0 0.153 moles of O2. Now we're trying to do, we're trying to get from moles of O2 to moles of silver oxide. So how do I get there? How do I go from moles of O2 to moles of silver oxide. Um, she just, would it be two over one? Two, AG, two O over um, one. How do I now get, continue on to get to grams of uh, silver oxide? The molar mass. The molar mass, perfect. So we know grams is on top. I don't know the molar mass off the top of my head either. Um, and then this is one mole of silver oxide. So, that's what we're going to do, and I have it all set over here. So once we do that, which was completely correct, um, next we finally get our answer, which is our grams of iron oxide. So I'm going to go back to the beginning just to reread this question so that you can see that we can like relook at it and see how I knew what to do um, just by looking at the question. So as always, right, we always want to figure out what we're given, always writing down what you're given, especially for gas laws. We have our pressure, volume, and temperature, that's it. The only formula that we know that has all three and only you know, one of each is going to be the ideal gas law. From there, since we're trying to get to mass, I know, well, if I were to plug this in to my ideal gas law, I can then get the moles and that would give me the moles of um, that would give me the moles of O2. Once I find the moles of O2, I then can make my way using stoichiometry, which we did here. I can make my way from moles of O2 to grams of 
silver oxide, and then I'm done. Is this making sense? Is this starting to kind of like connect? Yeah. Why don't you, you try this one? Pause the video. Seriously, pause the video. Try this out. Let's do this together. Come on! What are we given? Temperature 625. The pressure is um, 0 0.724 atmosphere. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Yeah. yeah, you're fine to just say we're given the mass of N2, temperature, pressure. Now, what I wanted us to notice was this. Uh, this only gives us the mass of N2, right, of nitrogen. Yeah. And then I know it's N2 because it tells me in the formula as well. So uh, another thing, by the way, whenever it's pretty much telling you nitrogen gas, uh, like same thing with oxygen gas, those exist in pairs. That was the diatomic molecules I was talking about, where instead of it just being N, it has to be N2. Oxygen is also the same. Now, the next thing that this question is saying is it's telling you that the temperature and the pressure, they're not of N2, they're of NO2. So that's the little trick here in this question, and some questions may say that, where you have to pay attention to, you know, what unit goes with what molecule or compound. So that's a little note that, that we definitely need to know. And then what are we finding in this question? The volume. Of, of what? NO2. Yes. Yeah. And we know that too because it tells us here, right? If the NO2, it only says NO2 in this sentence, right? And it only really talks about, at least in this very beginning, uh, the fact that it says of tells us that it has to be of N2. What formula are we using? The combined one. Why the combined one? Because... What is the combined gas law? PV equals NRT. That's the ideal gas law. Okay, that one then. Okay, yeah, that's why I wanted to just double check. Uh, combined gas law is the, the super large one, the P1, V1 over T2, yeah. So cool, the ideal gas law, that's correct. So we'll use the ideal gas law. And then I just mentioned here, just be aware of the units, that the mass is is uh, for N2 and then the temperature and pressure is NO2. So yeah, we are going to use PV equals NRT. And then we're, we're initially given our pressure and our temperature, right? But we don't have enough information. We're looking for the volume of NO2. The ideal gas law here, right? We want all of these, every single one of these to represent NO2 because we have the pressure, the temperature, and we now want the volume. We don't have that for, for N2. Like we don't know what the moles of NO2 is to plug it into the formula to then give us the volume. So that's what we have to do first. The first step is to convert those grams of N2 to moles of NO2. Yeah. Do we see that? Okay. Then from there, once we get those moles, then we can plug it into the formula because we'll have our pressure, our moles, we know our gas constant, and we know our temperature, and then we can just solve for V. So with a lot of these gas stoichiometry questions, all you're really doing is you're kind of like manipulating formulas to figure out, you know, to, to solve for whatever you're, you're asked to find. So in this case, let's start off. So why don't we start off, and I'm going to have you try this. Um, why don't you go ahead and convert your grams of N2 to moles of NO2? Go ahead and set that up. I already did. Oh, look at you. Okay. What did you get? Except I got stuck because I did... 62.7 grams of N2 times one mole over, and then I didn't know what the molar mass of N2. Uh, nitrogen is 14.01. So 28.02? 02. Mm -hmm. Cool, and then so we, we got two NO, moles of NO2, and then what goes on bottom? One mole of N2. Perfect, good. All right, and then, here, let me do the math. So we'll get this value for our moles of NO2. And then I'm gonna keep, keep going on to the next step. So now that we've found the moles of NO2, now we can just plug everything in to PV equals NRT and then solve for V. I think we're good at that part, right? Plug everything in, uh, we know all the units are fine. And then from there, solve for volume, which should give us 318 liters. Yep. Good, okay. If you're given a gas law question on the final, that's like free points. So make sure you have it down by practicing more and lucky for you, I have more examples with step-by-step -step solutions in my detailed notes on gas laws. So make sure to head over to melissamaribel.com or click the link in the description box to buy the notes. Now, if you're ready to keep studying, then click on this next video.